So this afternoon, my message is entitled, Walking in a Covenant Relationship with God. And that's what our, inspired, our responsive scripture reading was about. Uh, it was a covenant that God cut with Noah um, to serve Noah and his family, even though they found themselves in a midst of uh, wickedness. Everything around them was wicked. No one even um, wanted to know God no more, even as we see around us. Even as we see in these times, it is like the time of Noah, a lot of so much wickedness. You see how many people pass by the church and to go and do what they do and not even look at the house of God. You see early morning how many people will be here, excuse me to say, trying to get, you know, whatever they get next door. But nobody looks at what is going on in the house of God. And oftentimes, many that pass by here, uh, looking at the church, is speaking to them about judgment. It's speaking to them about judgment. Yeah. Beloved, let's look at them working in a covenant relationship with God. Once again, my name is Pastor Daniel Yeboah, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor of Latway Church of God in Christ, Arena of Release and Breakthrough. Beloved, what does working mean? The word of God says, except to agree, they cannot work together. Except to agree, they cannot work together. Working represents relationship. Working, the word working in translation in a, a religious circles represents relationship being in a relationship with someone being in a relationship with god walking you you be together with somebody in a relationship let's look at genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 genesis 1 26 to 28 it says and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him, male, female, created them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. That is a responsibility and an assignment. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So you see, God gave man dominion which is uh, also power to be able to take up the responsibility that he gave man. He said be fruitful, which is what? Be responsible. Be fruitful and multiply. And what? Take dominion over all these that I'm entrusting in, our, in your hands. Beloved, the purpose of a thing is found in the reason why it, it was manufactured or why it was created. The purpose of a thing is in the reason why that thing was manufactured or created. Beloved God the Father from this verse, we all know, created us so that he will have children on earth. God is a spirit. So he created, he made man as a representative of him on earth so that he will have children, he will have human beings representing him on earth as children. Beloved, and God made us his children on earth so that what? We will serve him, we will worship him, and we will fellowship, have fellowship with him relate to him in a level of a relationship to have 
fellowship one on one time with him. So in our in a sense of individuality, God demands fellowship from us. In our sense of individuality, in our sense of out of our social circles, God demands fellowship and a relationship with him. Because in the previous sermons, you have heard me uh, preaching and uh, talking about how God in the heavenlies is worshipped by all the heavenly bodies, all the angels, the 24 elders and the four living creatures, how they all worship God 24-7. So we are designed to have fellowship, to worship and to serve God. And what is in our service to God, in our service to God, is the responsibilities that God has given us to do on this earth. Beloved, Adam the first man, because he was in a relationship with God, was able to receive this power. So he said, let him have dominion. Dominion means power over everything. So which means when God created man, he also gave man some level of power over his environment or over her environment. And, and we, that's how we are able to tame these wild animals. That's how we are able to keep these elephants and lions and whales and all that you could describe. And when you go to Sea World, you have these huge uh, um, animals that live in water. And when you go to Babua Zoo, you have the elephants, uh, the tigers, uh, and the lions, and all these wild creatures that have been able to be tamed by man and kept in a cage. And we all go and pay money and see these things. Beloved, God gave Adam the power to what? Undertake the responsibility. Beloved, Adam was able to receive power and dominion from God because what? He was in a relationship. Amen with God. So he received power to be able to perform this responsibility over everything. Adam named all the animals that are in this world now, as we know. God gave Adam the power to name every beast, every animal that we are aware of in our environment today. Beloved, this let us know that we are able to be, perform our God-given responsibilities when we are in a relationship with Him. We are able to keep our God-given responsibilities and embedded in our destiny is also responsibilities that God has given us to make his name great, to make his name known. So in our responsibilities, God is able to manifest his greatness. God is able to manifest how powerful and awesome he is as a God. So God gave Adam the caretaker responsibility to take care of that which was on earth to take care of that which was in the well. Beloved, we could only be able to perform our God-given responsibilities in our relationships. You realize that when we are not in a perfect relationship with God, we are not able to maintain relationships around us. Every nature or level of responsibility. Hallelujah. And every area of our lives. We are not able to maintain and keep uh, our relationships or be able to be responsible for the things that God has entrusted in our hands. Beloved, God loved us before we first loved him. We 
did not just wake up once upon a time and say, oh God, we love you. Oh God, we cherish you. But God loved us first and put his love in us. Let's look at 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. He said, we love him because what? He first loved us. We love God because he first loved us. We cannot love unless we have the love of God within us. We cannot love Amen. our neighbor as expected of us. We cannot love our brothers and sisters unless we have the love of God in us. A story was told about a flight that was traveling um, in the air. And all of a sudden, the flight began to experience turbulence. I don't know if any one of us has experienced that up in the air, about 30,000 feet from ground, and experiencing turbulence in a plane, traveling from one city to the other. Beloved, as I speak to you, this flight began to experience turbulence, and usually, um, as many times that I've been on a plane traveling all over to Africa and Europe and all around even the United States, you realize that when there's going to be turbulence, they announce and ask everybody to put their seat belts on. And they encourage peace by saying, be calm and be seated. No one moves. Beloved, the, this flag began to shook. And the plane was going through this horrible, terrible times trying to get through this turbulence. Beloved, you could hear people screaming. The whole scenery was chaotic, was uh, very destructive. There was confusion up in all in that flight, which lasted for about five minutes. But if you were in the midst of it, as it was described, it felt like it lasted for an hour. Right. Beloved, people began to throw up, vomit, because of the uncomfortableness of what they were experiencing. There was vomit all over the flight, mm. and many were calling on different kinds of gods. Everybody was calling on the God that they serve, and as it was being described, even those that were ethics, who did not believe in God, were calling on the name of Jesus to be saved. Beloved, covenant appears in the Old Testament 280 times. 280 times, and the word covenant appears in the New Testament 33 times. The covenant relationship between man and man is described as bilateral. 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 With a covenant among men, men seal it with an oath, where both bodies vow by an oath, with each having the equal privileges and responsibilities to carry out their assigned rules. So in a covenant relationship, lifelong a relationship that um, stands as a covenant between man and man, which is also described as bilateral, the bond is sealed with a vow of an oath that both parties, both men or both women, shall enjoy equal privileges and equal responsibilities to carry out the assigned rules. The covenant between man and God is described as unilateral. Unilateral. Beloved, I'm laying a foundation because all month I'll be talking about covenant relationship with God. So this is the foundation throwing more light and deep meaning on covenant with God. Beloved, with the covenant relationship with God, God initiates the covenant. God 
determines the elements, what the covenant should be made of, which is, that's referred to as the elements. So God initiates, you read in Genesis chapter 1, 26, 28, God initiated, he said, let us create man. And in uh, Genesis, uh, the, the responsive scripture written, God said, I uh, told Noah, I enter a covenant with you. So God initiates and determines the elements of the covenant. And he confirms his covenant with humanity. We are recipients. We just receive it. We do not contribute to any covenant relationship with God. But we are not also expected to offer anything to the bond. We are not expected to offer anything, no element. God initiates and describes what the covenant entails. We just receive it as it is. We are called to accept it as offered and keep it as demanded. We are called to receive and accept God's covenant as offered and keep it as demanded. And we, in return, receive the results. We, in turn, receive the results, which is the blessings, the results of every covenant relationship with God, as we accept it and keep it as demanded, is the blessing. That God, by oath, assumes will not be with help. Hallelujah. Did you see that? God swears by an oath when he keeps a, a covenant with man, with you and I, that he will bless us if we keep that covenant. And the typical example was with Abraham. God swear, he said, I swear by myself for blessing, I will bless you. Beloved, so if we enter a covenant relationship with God, God has already sworn an oath that he will bless us when we keep the covenant, which is his word. This brings us to an understanding that God's covenant relationship with his children, who is you and I, is established through his word, and we keep it by obedience. So this brings the understanding that God's covenant relationship with you and I is established in his word, through his word, and we keep it word by obeying the word of God. Let's look at Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. That is a covenant. For then thou shalt what? Make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have what? Good success. So God's covenant relationship with us is established through his way. So to the degree and the level that you give reverence to the word of God, you bring Jesus to the scene. You bring the power of the Holy Ghost to the scene to bless you, Amen. to meet you at the point of your need. Amen. This also brings us to the revelation that God is the source and the originator of the whole entire covenant concept and phenomena. So the whole idea of concept was originated by God. God brought it into existence. God included a covenant relationship in his creation activity and handiwork. If you look at God's creation and handiwork, there's always a covenant relationship embedded and establishing it. Through our covenant relationship with God, we know that God cannot lie. Amen. God cannot fail us. Let's look at Psalm 80, 30. You did not hear me? I said through our covenant relationship with God, if we keep our covenant with God through his word, we will know that God cannot fail us. Amen. Or God do not lie. Amen. 
Let's look at Psalm 18, verse 30. It says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Psalm 145, verse 17. Psalm 145, verse 17. It said, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is what? Righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Psalm 37, verse 25 to 26. Psalm 37, verse 25 to 26. It said, I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken? Why? The righteous have a covenant relationship with God and ought not his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. So this psalmist said, Ever since his work with the Lord, we could only work with God in a covenant relationship. The word of God says, and Enoch worked with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Enoch worked with the Lord. Yes. And no and was taken by the Lord. No one saw his death. So working with the Lord is through his covenant relationship and by keeping it. Let us give God all the glory. Let us give them all the praise and all the honor. Hello, beloved. As you uh, watch this message, I want to say a quick prayer for you. I'm not sure what you're going through as you uh, watch this message. Maybe there are some things that you want God to do for you. Maybe there are some needs uh, you want God to meet you at, both spiritual and physical. I don't know what is going on in your life, in your finances in your family, in your relationship, in your children's life, or in the, the job situation. The word of God in Psalm 55 verse 22 says, Curse your curse on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be forsaken. Beloved, if you want to touch the screen and agree with me in faith, this hour I pray over you. Ask that the power of God should meet you at the point of every need. Every situation that you're being confronted by, every need in your life, I pray that the Spirit of the living God will meet you at the point of that need. I pray that the Lord release and dispatch his angels all around you to make a way where there's no way for you. I release the grace and the favor of the Lord upon your life. That every door that has been shut be open unto you in the name of Jesus. That every door that has been opened be shut by the mighty hand of God. The Lord break chains over your life. Every bondage, every captivity, captivity that I've held you bound, experience the deliverance of the Lord. Experience the mighty hand of God upon your life, over your children, over your relationship, if you are married, over your marriage, over your finances. Experience the supernatural provision and supply of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, so I meet with you again next week. Beloved, do you know Jesus? All that is going on around us, you no man knows the time that he or she will die. Do you know Jesus? Are you ready? If I should ask you this question, do you sincerely believe that where your soul will be if you die as you watch me five minutes from your death? Can you sincerely say where your soul will be, either in heaven or in hell? If you are not sure about the answer to that question, it's a sign that you need Jesus. I want you to repeat this prayer with me in faith and sincerity. Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross to save me from my sins. I thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I believe that you are the Son of God. I invite you into my heart to be my Lord and personal Savior. And I will serve you, Lord Jesus, 
for the rest of my life. If you pray this prayer in sincerity and in faith, I declare you saved. And angels in the heavenlies are rejoicing for your salvation. As I always say, there is a few steps I need you to take. I need you to look for a Bible and start reading the Gospels, which are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And will speak more to you about this Jesus that you have accepted and received in your heart. Also, pray and ask the Spirit of the Lord to lead you to a Spirit-filled Bible believing church in your community, in your neighborhood. If you are watching me and you are in Moreno Valley City, this is Lightway Church of God in Christ. You could look at uh, look us up uh, on the screen and come and fellowship and worship with us. But look for a spiritual Bible believing church. And when you go declare yourself to the leadership that you are saved and you are coming to worship and fellowship with them, be established and stay in that church to grow spiritually and to develop your salvation. Be blessed. So I'll meet with you next week. God bless you. I pray that you have been truly, truly, truly blessed by the word that you have just heard, that it has inspired you and encouraged you. Not only that, it has increased your faith. Amen. At this time, we're reaching out to you for your financial support to help us to reach more people, to reach the less fortunate, and to those who are in need. You can find our information on the screen. You can log on to www.lightwaychurch.com or you can send your checks or money orders to 14910 Paris Boulevard, Suite 81 in Moreno Valley, California, 92553. As you are preparing your financial seed, I'm asking you not to just throw your seed. Just don't put it in the mail and, 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 and that's it. No, I want you to speak a word of prayer over your seed. What is it that you are believing God to do in your life? That is what I want you to wrap your need around that seed that you are sending. The Bible declares in John chapter 14, verse 13, it says, and whatever you ask in my name, talking about our Father. Amen. That I will do that the Father may be glorified. Amen. So whatever you're asking, amen, what are you believing God to do? Speak a word of prayer over your seed and watch him do that. Amen. God bless you guys.